Happy days are here again. Cheltenham is upon us. The three-day November meeting cannot wait for the action in Gloucestershire. Joel and Frank is always alongside me. Uh, don't forget you can listen to us as well on Spotify now. Like and subscribe as well here and we'll let you know whenever a new show is available. And well, you don't want to be tuning to Spotify. You need to see this because me and Joel are here in Blighty, freezing, and you just glance over to Frankie's screen, and there he is with the Bahrainian skyline in the background. I just missed you, Matt, but I, I'm guessing you were talking about my new Zoom filter I've put on from Cheltenham. <laughs> exactly right, yeah. <laughs> just a clear fill in the background there. <laughs> yeah no Bahrain's wonderful um I'm very lucky to be here for the Bahrain International Trophy on Friday and I'm not gonna lie to you it hasn't been hard graft I've been shopping with Jason Watson I've been to the gym with Rosie Jessup I've been on the track this morning with Sir Alex Ferguson even by the pool with Jeb Mason actually today and Sir Alex so I'd love to tell you boys that it's been non-stop graft but so far yeah, I've been very well looked after and I'm having a lot of fun. Tell you what, Joe, I'll be feeling it at Cheltenham on Sunday when he's up there in his flip flops. <laughs> All right, but uh, I reckon they should change the dress, Craig, back and uh, not let him in. Uh, so you've been in Bahrain doing your stuff. I was in a uh, crew with Jess Glynn. Um, Matt's probably never heard of her, uh, but I had a great time there. Um, my feet are so cold here, but I'm not going to win. It's winners all the way. Hey, I saw you all last week. That um, 100 to 1 shot in the November handicap I gave you. Pleasant man, the old one of Paul Nichols, been switched to Jack Jones. Came fourth. Came fourth, 100 to 1. Always a belter when you've got three places. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, to be fair, you know, we've paid extra places. We've paid four places. So a nice 100 to 1 place for Joel continues a good run of form. And now it's Cheltenham. So it is the acid test. The pressure is on. So without further ado, we are stuck into the action on Saturday. We've got six runners in the novice chase at 145. We said this a couple of weeks ago. Nigel Twist and Davis had Broadway Boy. And we've all been caught. And I, was, I said about the jockey. Uh, change of or Sam Twist and Davis choosing to ride we've been caught so when I saw that he was being ridden by Harry Skelton I thought oh he switched and he's going to ride Broadway boy no 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 he's on good risk at all I'll start with you Joel is that a tip in itself because I know this is one that you like from the Sam Thomas yard no it's not and I've just I've just seen the, uh, the the jockey bookings here, and that's not how I was sold. So I don't know what the L's got on here. Uh, and I really like Broadway Boy in this, and it's it's five to one. I mean, f five to one. I'm right in thinking this is the the horse that was second to floor in Ports at two and a half lengths uh, when it's carrying five five pounds more. Um, and unless they know something I don't know, I thought Broadway Boy would have gone off second favourite. Mister Coffee on as I want to race for three years. No good. That's, that's the worst price of all time. But all the money is for Sam Tom, Sam Thomas and good risk at all. With Sam Twist and Davis presumably binning off his old man. No, not one, but two. Shock. Disbelief. <laughs> he can't believe it. He's only just, just realised. Look at that, Frank. <laughs> Sam Twist and Davis binning off his old man. Not once, but twice to ride good risk at all. I thought that's a massive point. And I think you've got to take on the favourite because he never wins. I agree, yeah. Uh, Joel's shouting into that microphone as if he's trying to reach me in Bahrain. <laughs> Nearly deafened me with my headphones in. Um, yeah, I think it is a tip in itself, Matt, that Sam's chose to ride good risk at all. Um, he won first time over fences and looked really good doing it. And actually, out of those that are less exposed over fences, I know Mr. Coffee's ran, as Joel said, a thousand times and not won over uh, larger obstacles. But out of those that are, you know, novice chasers, he did actually have the best uh, hurdle rating as well. So he's a, he's a decent hurdler, switched to fences, ran well the first time. Sam had the choice of two of his old mans and he still hasn't chosen it. And it's trained by Sam Thomas, who we all love. So good risk at all, I think, is a great shout in the first. I didn't realise you in Bahrain. You hadn't mentioned it much, mate. So uh, I'm glad you just cleared that up. <laughs> right, let's move on. To well, hang on, hang on. Where, 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 where is he? Um, oh, Butlins somewhere. Butlins! 
<laughs> no, Bahrain, that was it, Bahrain, yeah. He doesn't like to mention it, though, so keep it on the down low. Right, let's move on to the big one, the Paddy Power Gold Cup. I think this is a deeper renewal than we normally get. We've got the Broadway winner from last year. We've got the one two five from the Turners as well. It's a real high-class renewal. I'll start with you this time, Frankie. Yes, it is. Lots of classy horses in here. Um, lots of those that if there was one in here, you'd be saying, oh, it's a grade one horse in a handicap. But there's about five in here that look like that. Um, one horse, which I just don't think I'll ever stop talking about because we backed Angel's Breath from October until the Supreme. About 10 of us were counting our money, uh, ready to semi-retire and go on a summer holiday together. And it was off the bridle before they turned home and finished seventh, I think. But <laughs> although he's not a Supreme winner, far from it. He does have snatches of really classy form. And weighted 10 stone 10 in this, I don't think Angel's Breath would be the biggest surprise if he put his best performance in. Um, again, trained by the man Sam, Sam Thomas. I, I wouldn't put someone off a, a small each way bet on Angel's Breath, but my, my selection comes a bit further up uh, the market, not long till May, uh, who's had a had a go around Cheltenham over two miles Um to get him fit and ready for this test was second to stage star last year in a handicap this time gives or gets sorry i think eight pounds from stage star so is well weighted and stays on well and we know that stage star and the real whacker and maybe a couple others will like to go forward so um i think that not long until may staying on up that hill with a bit of a weight advantage and having some previous uh having a previous run round channel over two miles for fitness Looks a real good bet. Yeah, it's interesting. You're usually doing a bit of a prep run ahead of this challenge. It's quite difficult coming here on season one. So that's what the two big novice winners from last year are trying to do. Joel, the real whacker, uh, and stage star. But they do bring a huge class element to the, uh, to the, to, to the occasion here. Yeah, I need some away with Sam Twist and Davis. I think he might have some, have some trouble at home. He just don't want to ride his dance at the minute. Uh, but obviously stays on uh, Real Wacker for Patrick Neville, who's three from three. I think that came from Anduffield, didn't it? I, I keep looking back at the, the race when um, beat Jerry Kalam at Cheltenham. And, and I, I kept saying it was just a brilliant ride from, from uh, Sam Twist and Davis, which it was. Um, and Jerry Kalam should be unbeaten. Uh, so lucky that horse, bloody horse. Um, I'm, I'm going for the real wacker here. It's it's a it's a no, it's a proper grade one horse. It's it's just just it goes goes well fresh. Won't need the they won't need the run. It's for me. I've been a little bit like everybody was in Edward Stone, going it ain't that good. And actually looking back at the videos um, and and the way it's ridden. Now we know what Sam's going to do on this. You're expecting the other jockeys to know what he's going to do with it. So you'd expect a spoiler to be there, but jockeys are jockeys. And I think the real whacker at seven to one is, is, is unbelievable value, unbelievable value, you know, jump state. Oh, it's just, it's, it's a gift from the gods. As we said once about Frodon. <laughs> I think it'll go back to 1965 horse to, to carry this much weight off this mark in this race. So, but you're right. He's won the dipper over this track and trip. He just kept fine. He's the only horse to beat Jerry Colombi. He could have a massive, class edge Look, fugitive was interesting as well on season return they've been talking uh, him up uh, as well uh, yeah angel's breath certainly has to go there with a chance as well for sam thomas and uh, jonathan burke big big contest looking forward to that harper's brook as well right down the bottom but ben pauling's horses not in the greatest of form brilliant renewal looking forward to that high class renewal of the paddy power gold cup we move on to the 255 the three mile handicap hurdle then we're set to have 15 starters uh, in this one a couple that i thought were interesting place net for david pike first start for him coming from france was a good uh fourth just behind a nice horse of tom george as well tom george's clongo castle last time uh, mocha devassi i think is well handicapped as well for jane williams that'd be my two against the field tough pickings though joel competitive handicap hurdle here fergal o'brien right he's got this horse something called polish it depends which channel you're watching what time uh, and Fergal O'Brien sometimes calls it Polish and sometimes Polish. Uh, four figures of two, 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 two. It, every single time it's finished second. Now, Frankie said a couple of weeks ago, he had some weird theory, which uh, worked out to be true in many cases. Um, it's a cliff horse for me. It's around 14, 16 to one or something like that. It is your place horse. Uh, it, it's it's got to win at some point. It's ultra consistent. Uh, it ran a couple of years ago around Cheltenham. I think it finished third and 
and um, maybe four things. It, it, it's right. Um, look, two, 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 two. We'll put the one there. But I will be happy uh, with, with another placed effort here at that price of sixteen to one. It's one of those that you look at and you go, yeah, go and have a little bit of that. What, what was Frankie's uh, thing about if you're also finishes second forty-seven times? If you finish your second <laughs> 47 times, 48 times is the time to be on, I think it was. And it's an interesting point. If Oski's finishing, finishing second, you're on each way at 14 to 1, you're not going to crab it, are you? So, Polish, Polish, whichever way you like to call it for Joel. Frankie, to run a second itis, are you with it? I'm not. My, my theory was three seconds and the fourth will win, but uh, Polish has clearly disproved that. However, as you both said, if you kept coming second at 14s, then you're arguably onto a winner, aren't you? So couldn't put you off Polish. Um, Dartan, I thought was interesting, who won a handicap very easily and has been running on the flat since, but has gone up £12. And that doesn't really get offset by James Smith because he was on board uh, when winning that handicap last time out. But again, a nice each way price and I'm hoping might stay on into the frame. But I'm going to go with our, our bet Fred man, who's also on a birthday weekend and, and does have some nice horses this weekend. John Joe Rudge, Judicial Law, who was second at the October meeting Cheltenham. Again, I'm going for that fitness angle, course and distance, good form. Um, with that second in the Potemps qualifier, I think it's interesting that they've come and had a crack at this. Wouldn't want it too soft because his RPR figures are better on good to soft or good than they are on at least on heavy. Uh, so I'd like it to... Day soft and not get any worse than that, but I think John Joe has a great chance on judicial law to go one better than in October. Yeah, I spoke to him about that, and he's qualified for the attempts final enough for his second last time. So that probably will be the long term aim. Could it be a double then in those silks uh, for John Joe O'Neill Jr. and his dad, the trainer? Because Springwell Bay in the 330 would be my best bet of the weekend. I know Joel's shocked uh, about that, but he's got a lot of weight. But I think is a real class. Played one contest last season, Frankie. Yeah, I, you beat me to it. it. Was going to be my best bet as well. Um, I'm not bothered that it's carrying twelve stone. I do not think it's the strongest field in the world. Uh, they think a lot of Springwell Bay. He was unlucky when he was finishing a season in the Grade One at Aintree. This is a Grade One horse in a mediocre handicap so he can get away with carrying top weight i think he has a great chance and that slightly influenced me with judicial law as well and it being john joe's birthday and for the same owners i think they're going to have a good crack um with some some decent chances at the weekend yeah then springle bay for me springle bay for frankie is a nap hand joel are you going elsewhere oh no no nap of the weekend Springwell Bay. Enough said. We've ruined his birthday. We've we, we've ruined John Joe's birthday. We've ruined it for him by by all napping. This is the first <laughs> time this has happened. It is, isn't it? Ever. All three of us have got oh. the same as a nap of the weekend. Oh. John, poor John, on his birthday. Oh. John. Falls at the first, falls at the first, falls at the first, he's down. <laughs> Carrying 12 stone, you can just add another couple of stone on top of that with our money. So, <laughs> wow. Well, they then, unanimous, nap of the weekend, you've got it early. We think we'll win the 3.30. Just going to fast forward on to uh, Sunday's car. So there's a couple of big races to look forward to. Um, or condition chase and, of course, the big handicap hurdle. Uh, we'll talk about the Schlaw first. Is it all about John Bond, Joel? Is this the first stop in the road to the Rhiner? So it's this race, Tingle Creek, Rhiner for John Bond. That's what a lot of people are saying. And um, I, I did see on uh, your website, um, there was some there was some little specials on there. Look at that for a plug. Um, you know, what do you do with Edward Stone? What, what do you do? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I was you know, the biggest fan and he gets crabbed so much that people saw how good he was and ran really bad, badly in Queen Mother. Uh, they took him to get assessed and scoped and I'm not a vet for whatever they do. Uh, they tested everything and anything. Now at this point, you want to, you want to have a look <laughs> and say, I want to find something about what went wrong that day. I, I, I had the prices and, and it would be a really fun bet for me. Be, well, I say not fun bet. It's not bloody but if it loses, is it? But I would, I, I would, I would have me a couple of quid on Edward Stone. It's nothing that I'd get involved with seriously. 
Um, and, and I don't know what this Stone wants. I heard two Alan King interviews uh, where he appears to as know much about me uh, as I know about him, about the well-being of Edward Stone. Um, you know, seems fit, seems fine, and we'll see what happens from here. So there's a, there's a lot of could do anything here. You could see him win by 25 lengths or be pulled up uh, for a bit of entertainment. If someone was going to chuck you a free couple of quid bet, uh, I was just for the price play. But you, you could see John Bond. Is he the real deal? That's the thing. Is he the real deal? Uh, and, and does a treble this year quite easily. Interesting. Just three races for John Bond. Maybe wins them all starting here. I know Joel's long-term fancy for the Ryanair. Uh, Frankie, is it all about John Bond? I think so, but uh, you'd certainly be nervous if you had some money on at one to two. Anyway, um, the thing that makes me like John Bond more is I feel like he's still got a decent amount of improving to do. Um, I still feel like he's just slowly getting better and better, but I don't think it's a one to two shot. That's for sure. Um, Edward Stone ran his, his best um, race ever on seasonal reappearance at Sandown last year. So if he comes here in as good form and John Joe, uh, John Joe, <laughs> John Bond, uh, talking about John Joe and Neil too much. John Bond uh, has taken a while to get going. He's kind of the opposite. It gets better as the season goes on. That could create a bit of a mismatch and, and Edward Stone would certainly have a chance. So John Bond's definitely not a one to two shot for me, but if you just ask me the low, most likely winner price is ignored, then yeah, it probably is him. Yeah, John Bonney probably does look uh, the winner, but say price factored into that. Right, this isn't so easy. It is the great one. I, I hope they all turn up the big ones. This looks a brilliant race. You've got the Welsh champion Erdl 1 2, well, uh, Namine Line and any harm in Askin, who, as I keep saying, of course, is the only horse to ever beat Constitution Hill. It wasn't a point to point. Uh, you've got Jim Coco, last year's runner up as well. You've got Luckaway, who really caught my eye when he went in here uh, impressively three weeks ago. And then the talking horse, the big gambler race right down the bottom, Paul Byrne owned William Mullins train for the first time, only a matter of time. Is the money spot on, Joel? I wish the train was spot on before today when I could have got anti prices. Look, when you see like a Paul Byrne horse or, or a legendary gambler um, in, in one of these these races and, you, and you're looking through it you see his trains it you know everything's there it's it's, it's very obvious um change change the owner you change the the trainer I'd, i i i wouldn't be touching it um do, another one for money is the one i put up a couple of weeks ago is one of the best bets of the weekend was the uh um dan skelton train nick of glory um there was some 33 rounds around went into about eight to one now and it won by two Ten lengths at Ascot under a brilliant ride from Tristan Durrell, who claims a five. He's a he's a really really good jock. He's a really good and he's probably the only jock in the stable who can judge his pace. Uh, and he and he did it. He did it. Won at ten to one by four and a half lengths. Um, and and it was comfortable. I mean, Racing Post says comfortable. I watched it and the money was on that day from me. I drifted out the money with from me and and I thought it was absolutely perfect. And I have no no reason to knock this. And the more money it comes. Uh, for the uh, Mullins and Paul Byrne, I think we're getting a better price. Um, Nick Abocca Glory will just go off and let him do what he likes in front. Nick Abocca Glory then for a sweet success. Good Joel. There you go. I'm here all <laughs> right. Ooh, Frankie, give us the win of the Great Wood. Iberico Lord, I think. It's got to have a good chance. Um, almost didn't run at this meeting last year when making his debut. Um, in England because it was really quick and they were umming and ahhing, umming and ahhing, didn't know if he was going to run, but he was really well talked about before the race and then was a very disappointing sixth, but blame that on the ground, maybe um, they can, has won since, it was only a class one I was heard of, but did win and then came second to stable mate at Sandown. I just think quite brave to come and have a crack at this, Coney carries 11 stone um, off of initial talking hype and being campaigned fairly quietly since, has to be better than a mark 126 in my opinion but how good is another question and then to throw another dart could lucia have a bit of a crack at this carries 11 10 we're second up weatherby but we know the scoutons really do enjoy weatherby and we know that weatherby was nearly called off because it was a bog and lucia certainly doesn't like that so um oh sorry the scouts didn't actually win did they matt you'll remind me of that because 
Um, you were all over, you wear it well. But the point still stands that the ground wasn't right for Lucia. She is a decent horse um, and might have a decent chance in this. But I bear up a lord, I, I'm quite keen on. That with the bar rain air going to his head. Yeah, just to reiterate, we're actually <laughs> talking about Sunday's racing before decks are known. So obviously, uh, hopefully they will be declared for the Great Wood, those selections. Uh, and hopefully we see John Bond in the Schlaw chase as well on Sunday. So we don't need to do the naps, boys. Springwell Bay it is, isn't it? It's already won. It's won already. <laughs> Joel is nodding for those listening on Spotify. <laughs> and, um, no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I thought, have you got, have you got next best from the weekend? Because look, I'm, I'm, I'm two out of two from bumpers uh, this year. You talk to bumper, uh, there's one for the, always seems to be a form now, Oliver Greenall and uh, Josh Guerriero, whatever you call him. Uh, Henry Brook takes the ride, first time out, Gamester's Guy. Uh, and I'm just putting it up there because I'm passing it out to you. Um, but it's, it's my, my mate, Bumpity Bump who uh, is your bumper guy, and um, he gives me the tick for this one. So you never know. It's a bumper, like we always say, unless it's Sam Thomas, uh, and it's 7-1 to one and 7-2 to two and wins by half the track. Um, but it's one for your fun bet. Um, brilliant. <laughs> there we are. Then. Six races looked at Chocolate over the weekend. We're all across Springwell Bay. Gamesters guy, you talked to They'll be splashing through the mud in Staffordshire on Saturday afternoon as well. Uh, don't forget, as has been saying, we are now available on Spotify to listen to, so you don't have to see us. Although you do need to see the skyline behind Frankie. Uh, so you can always watch us on YouTube as well, where you can like and subscribe. And then from Monday, we'll be reviewing this weekend and every Monday after us because our Road to Cheltenham series starts. That's when it starts to get real, boys. When Cheltenham, we start talking about the Road to Cheltenham five months away from Monday. How do you feel about that? I'm ready to go. We're finding the, the supreme think... winner, aren't we? Yeah. Can, can, can we can we last can we last the season last the... we're going early we are going early <laughs> how are you Harry Skelton <laughs> not that early <laughs> right yes join us Monday then we'll review all the Cheltenham match and what's happened in the season so far as well and try and give you some long uh, obviously long long term plans long term tips for the festival uh, it's itself so it is safe for gambling week as well this week so please i must say please gamble responsibly uh keep it fun keep it friendly as well join us monday for the road to Cheltenham. back next friday looking ahead to the big one at haydock the betfair chaser as well so make sure you join us then have a great weekend